All right, uh, let's continue. Uh, so uh, our next speaker this morning is Marco Livington from the University of Oxford, and um, he is going to tell us something about the topic that uh, uh, both Gilbert and Ben were quite interested in, which is one related groups. And uh, there's been some quite uh, remarkable progress uh, in this area on, uh, 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 in the last several years, uh, and Marco uh, uh, has been a part of this progress, so he will hopefully tell us about some of those results. And the title of his talk is One Related Groups, Free Bicyclic Groups and Coherence. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me and for organizing this uh, conference commemorating two wonderful mathematicians. Uh, I unfortunately never managed to meet either of them, but there is no doubt that their work has had a profound inf influence on my research. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about some joint work with David Kilak uh, on one related groups, free bicyclic groups and coherence. So first things first, uh, I should define some of the, thing, the things in my title. So free bicyclic groups. So I will not be assuming that my free bicyclic groups are finally generated free bicyclic. Uh, so for me, a free bicyclic group is a group which fits into an exact sequence with a free group. Uh, in, on the left and an infinite cycle group on the right. And F can be infinitely generated. I will generally be assuming my groups are uh, countable, but F can be an infinitely generated free group. Uh, and I'll specify if I mean a finally generated free by cycle group. Okay. So some examples. Uh, well, free groups. So all free groups are free by cyclic because take any map to Z kernel is going to be free. Similarly for surface groups and more generally uh, hyperbolic limit group is also well virtually free by cyclic. This result is due to Hagen and Weiss. And later in this talk I'll, I will uh, show that there are many other groups which you know uh, which are actually virtually free by cyclic. Um, and the structure given by uh, this exact sequence allows one to prove many strong results uh, about these groups. So for example, uh, Baumslag showed that all these groups are residually finite. Um, they all have quadratic Dane functions uh, and their, their con the conjugacy problem is solvable. This is due to Bogopolsky, Martino, Maslakov, and Ventura in the finally generated free case, uh, but it carries over also to general uh, free by cycle groups. And the uh, property which is most relevant to this talk is coherence. So a group is coherent if all of its finitely generated subgroups are finitely presented. So Fain Handel showed in 99 that all finitely generated free by cyclic groups are finitely presented. Uh, and this answered a question of bounce leg. So every subgroup of a free by cyclic group is free by cyclic. So this in particular implies that all free by cyclic groups are coherent. Um, so finally generated here, meaning that G is finally generated, not the free part. Okay. So when the group, when the free group in uh, free by cyclic group is finally generated, there are generally many tools that can be used to study them. Uh, namely, if you understand the automorphism group of a free group, and the uh, dynamics of uh, of an automorphism of a free group, you can uh, understand free by cyclic groups very well. But generally, these these results carry over also to non finitely generated free by cyclic groups. Okay, so the next thing in the title was one related groups. So one related groups, uh, their study started almost 100 years ago, when Magnus proved the Frey Uh There are relatively few results which are known to hold for all one related groups, uh, but this is one famous result which is known. So Magnus showed that all one related groups have solvable work on them. Um, but other than this, there are very few which results which know, are known to hold for all one related groups. For example, it's not even known if the conjugacy problem is solvable for all one related groups or the isomorphism problem. Um, and many other questions are still open, uh, many of which were asked by Darmstadt. Um, 
And the reason that there are not many results known for all warm related groups is because they have uh, they can exhibit a wide variety of uh, behaviors. So there are many tools to study certain subclasses of warm related groups, but to study all at once is often difficult. So some examples of properties which uh, can hold. Uh, well, Baumslag and Solitar introduce these Baumslag Solitar groups. Uh, they are they can be non residually finite, non Hopfian. Baumslag uh, introduced the class of para free groups. These are groups which have the same null potent quotients as free groups. So they cannot be distinguished from a free group by their null potent quotients. Uh, Baumslag showed that there are many examples in the class of one related groups uh, with such property. Uh, they can have almost any polynomial Dane function. Uh, they can also have Dane function not bounded by any finite tower of exponentials. So for example, the baumslag gersten group. Uh, and their subgroups can also be, have arbitrarily bad distortion functions. Okay. So in general, one related groups can be hard to sort of, uh, well, prove anything to hold for all of them. But if you restrict to a certain subclass, then uh, there is a chance. So one particularly nice subclass of one related groups are one related groups with torsion. <clears throat> in uh, 1960, Kras, Magnus, and Solitar showed classified exactly when a one related group has torsion. So given a one related presentation, uh, you can determine whether it has torsion precisely by just looking at the words and checking if it is a uh, proper power. So Clearly, all the torsion will be well. All the torsion is going to be conjugate into uh, the subgroup generated by W in this case, um, and there's no other way you can have torsion. Generally, when one studies class of group classes of groups, the ones with torsion are uh, harder to understand, but this is not the case for one related groups. So Bill Newman uh, Newman showed in '68 that uh, one related groups with torsion are Hyperbolic. So this is pre hyperbolic, but what he showed was that the presentation of a one group with torsion is a Dane presentation. So one can solve the word problem very easily. You just take your input word and you check if there's a large subword of the relator which occurs in that input word and you reduce the size, et cetera, until eventually you're left with a trivial word or a word which cannot be reduced in length. So this implies that the group is hyperbolic. Okay. There are a number of other results Newman showed about one related groups of torsion, uh, but I will not mention any more today. Uh, but I did want to talk about some conjectures of Baumslag. Uh, so first one uh, was about residual finiteness. So Baumslag conjectured in 67 that all one related groups of torsion are residually finite. And then later he strengthened, strengthened this conjecture to uh, virtually free by cyclic. And remember, he, he proved that free by cyclic groups are residually finite. Um, okay. So now I've introduced all the names in the title. Uh, I'm going to move on to the main theorem that Devin and I proved. Uh, but first, I need a couple of definitions of things which appear in the statements. So the first definition is that of a special group. So these uh, played a, a big role in the resolution of conjecture six, uh, bounce leg. Uh, so let's take a simplicial graph. Then the right angle Artin group on this graph is simply the group with the following presentation. So we take generators for each vertex of the graph, and we say each vertex generator commutes if precisely when the uh, two vertices are joined by an edge in the simplicial graph. Okay, and a group, so the definition of a special group is essentially, it's gonna be a fundamental group of a special cube complex, but I'm not gonna get into the def that, that part of the definition, but one can think of special groups essentially as just subgroups of right angle Artin groups. And this is a theorem of Hagland and Wise. And it turns out that these uh, right angle Artin groups have very rich subgroup structure. So over the yeah, last 10, 15 years, 
uh, Wise and various collaborators have shown that many groups turn out to be uh, special or virtually special. So for example, any hyperbolic finally generated free bicyclic group uh, is virtually special. Uh, this is work of Hagen and Wise in combination with the result of Agol. Any uh, small cancellation group, again, by work of Wise in combination with the result of Agol. Um, all Coxeter groups are virtually special. Hagen and Wise proved this. And all limit groups are also virtually special. So many classes of groups which uh, are well known to geometric group theorists actually turn out to be virtually special. Similarly, many three manifold groups as well. Um, and the class which is most relevant to today's talk is class of one related groups of torsion. So I think Wise announced this around 10 years ago. Uh, so the result is that all one related groups of torsion are virtually special and being subgroups, virtually subgroups of rags, they are hence residually finite and even linear as well. So this was this was how Wise resolved the uh, residual finiteness conjecture. Right. Okay. So, yeah, there is one more definition I need to make before stating the main theorem. Uh, that is of L two Betty numbers. Again, I'm not going to go into the full definition here, uh, but they, when you restrict to groups which are residually finite, there is a very convenient description of L2 Betty numbers. So this is this result is known as the Luke approximation theorem due to Luke. So if you have a group of finite type and you take some series of finite index normal subgroups which intersect in the identity, uh, then the nth L2 Betty number of G is simply the limits of the nth regular Betty numbers of these finite index normal subgroups scaled by the index. And the result essentially says also that this limit does exist. And it's precisely the nth L2 Betty number. OK. Um, right. And these, these Betty numbers have been computed for many classes of groups. Uh, and one example, one particular example, is that of one related groups again. So Dix Linnell showed in 07 that if you're a one related group, then uh, your well, the first L2 Betty number uh, is essentially either zero or minus the order characteristic of your group. The zeroth is, is either zero or the order characteristic of your group. Uh, so this will only be positive if the, if G is finite. So in general, it's just going to be zero minus order characteristic of G and again, and zero in uh, the second position. Um, okay. Okay, now, now we're ready to state the main theorem. So our main result is essentially a homological characterization of virtually free by cycle groups. Uh, and to do this, we need to restrict to uh, subclass of groups. So the hypothesis, uh, we assume G to be a hyperbolic and virtually special group. Uh, and with this assumption, the following equivalence. So G is has rational cohomological dimension at most two, and the second L2 Betty number vanishes. This is equivalent to G being virtually free by cyclic, which is also equivalent to being virtually a subgroup of a finitely generated free by cyclic group. So in combination with combining all the results I've mentioned until now on more related groups of torsion, so what First, we know they're all hyperbolic by Newman spelling theorem. We know they're all virtually special by Wise's result. Uh, they all have rational cohomological dimension at most two. In fact, the ones with torsion are virtually torsion free, or so yeah, virtual cohomological dimension two. And uh, Dix and L showed that they have vanishing second L2 Betty number. So a corollary of this result is the resolution of Baumstag's virtually free by second conjecture. So all one related groups with torsion are virtually free by cyclic. More generally, this, this holds for any one related group, which is hyperbolic and virtually special. Uh, so for example, any small cancellation one related group uh, is going to be hyperbolic and virtually special, and therefore also 
virtually to, uh, free by cyclic. Okay, so there, there are some other um, consequences of this result, uh, but before I mention them, I wanted to go briefly over the proof of, of this of theorem 11. Um, so how does one prove this result? So first we need the definition of an algebraic fiber. So a group G algebraically fibers, if it has emits a epimorphism onto Z with finitely generated kernel. Um, and then the key results that we're going to use is this result due to Kielak. Uh, so if G is a finitely generated virtually special group, then G virtually algebraically fibers, if and only if the first L2 Betty number of G vanishes. So the hypothesis of the theorem is slightly uh, broader than, than I've stated here, but virtually special groups are the uh, class that will be used here. Um, okay, so this is a very, very powerful tool. Um, and uh, it applies to, to many groups, but when a group does not have vanishing first L2 Betty number, then, well, we can't apply it. So many, any, any group which is virtually free by cyclic, where the free part is not finally generated, uh, this group will not have vanishing first L2 Betty number. Um, it will when the free part is finally generated, but most one related groups, well, uh, one related groups of torsion cannot be virtually finally generated free by cyclic. So one cannot apply this result directly uh, to one related groups with torsion in any case. So we, we thought to sort of come up with a uh, result which sort of circumnavigated this, this, uh, this restriction. So our idea was to essentially construct an embedding into a group from which we could apply this result. So we employ the following strategy. We assume our group is hyperbolic and virtually special, uh, and we find some infinite index quasi-convex subgroup, H in G, which induces an isomorphism on L2 cohomology. Uh, this is known as the L2 Fry Heitzatz, and it's uh, essentially a variation of result due to Peterson and Tom. Um, then using this, this subgroup, we embed our group G into a HR extension uh, with associated subgroup H and a second appropriately chosen group, uh, such that the resulting group is virtually special. So we need a little bit of care here. Um, and then we also need to ensure that the resulting group has vanishing first L2 Betty number. So then we can apply theorem 13. Okay. Uh, but then, then it's not over. We also need to uh, constrain the finiteness properties of the kernel of the algebraic vibration to ensure that the resulting group is uh, free by cyclic or virtually free by cyclic. So the and the proof actually yields a high dimensional uh, analog of the main theorem I stated. So in order to obtain this, we need to use a result of Sam Fisher, which builds on uh, David Kielak's results. Uh, so the full statement is is this. So H is a hyperbolic and virtually special group with rational cohomology dimension at most two. Then there is some finite index subgroup L and the following commutative diagram uh, of exact sequences. So intuitively, what am I saying here? So a virtual, fi virtual algebraic vibration means you've got a finite index subgroup which maps to Z with finely generated kernel. And here we're saying you have a finite index subgroup with a map to Z such that the kernel is not necessarily finely generated, but the action, the Z action on K can in some sense be extended to Z action on a finely generated subgroup uh, over group N. Okay, and we can ensure that the group G has the following properties. So G will also be hyperbolic, special, and L will be a quasi-convex subgroup. The cohomological dimension of G is the same as that of H. And again, this is a algebraic vibration of G, so N is finally generated. And with sufficiently, uh, you know, with enough vanishing of L2 Betty numbers, except for the first one, 
um, you can ensure that the cohomological dimension of the kernel actually is uh, is one less of the cohomological dimension of the group that you started off with. So when we restrict to groups of cohomological dimension two, uh, this means that the group we've embedded the finite index subgroup into is free by cyclic because the groups of cohomological dimension one are precisely the free groups. Okay. Um, but also in general, um, if we do not uh, restrict it to cohomological dimension two, this result essentially says you can, there is a HR extension of a finite index subgroup over a um, group with rational cohomological dimension one less than the one you started with. Okay. Uh, finally, I wanted to mention some further applications of our main results. So um, originally, we, we wanted to prove Baumslag's conjecture, but we found an interesting link with coherence. Uh, so we thought coherence is a pretty strong property, pretty rare property. Uh, so using this criterion, it would be nice to be able to show that many groups not known to be coherent are actually coherent because they're virtually free by cyclic. So combining with the Fein Handel theorem. But it turns out that what we ended up showing is that many groups which are already known to be coherent turn out to be virtually free by cyclic. And we couldn't find any groups which are known to be coherent in cohomological dimension two with the right hypothesis and are not virtually free by cyclic. So for instance, our result shows that well, okay, all hyperbolic and virtually special one rate groups are virtually free by cyclic. So now all one rate groups are known to be coherent, but obviously they're not all virtually free by cyclic. For example, bounce like solitar groups. Um, then co compact lattices of Bourdon buildings uh, with Q strictly smaller than P minus one, they're all virtually free by cyclic. In fact, this is precisely the criteria needed to ensure coherence. This coherence result was proved by Wise. Uh, and thirdly, any ascending HR extension of a free group, this is going to be coherent. Uh, if we restrict to hyperbolic and virtually special ascending HR extensions, then they're all actually virtually free by cyclic as well. So all three of these uh, follow from our main theorem. Uh, but I wanted to mention some other classes of coherent groups, which are also virtually free by cyclic. So limit groups of cohomological dimension two, this is proven by Hagen and Wise. And in the hyperbolic case, it also follows from our main theorem. Finally generated three manifold groups of rational cohomological dimension two are also uh, virtually free by cyclic, and they're known to be coherent by the, the compact core theorem. And all coherent arting groups of cohomological dimension two are also but actually they're all free by cyclic on the nose. This is due to Mayer. So I just wanted to close with a question. So question is, is every coherent hyperbolic and virtually special group with rational cohomological arrangement at most two actually virtually free by cyclic? Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Marco. It's very interesting. So we have a couple of minutes for questions and comments. So if somebody has a question or a comment, please um, unmute yourself and speak up. Uh, uh, could you please uh, show the last slide as well? Because your first thing, like the first, uh, you say hyperbolic and virtual special. Yes, this is like not all yeah. hyperbolic. Because no. yeah. Okay. Yeah, here because... you can do hyperbolic okay. and virtually special, but perhaps one can drop hyperbolic. Yeah, because because it's yeah. So for because your your question is for coherent hyperbolic, right? So yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other comments or questions? So uh, I actually had a, a question myself. So uh, in one of your results, you had an, uh, as an assumption that the, the second uh, L two Bayesian number is equal to zero, right? Yes. So how easy is it uh, to verify that? Uh, you know, what does one do in practice? Uh, well, okay, so yeah, for, for one rate groups, one can uh, do this quite quite directly, actually, from the definition of L2 Betty numbers. Uh, and in 
yeah, in our article, we also developed some uh, tools to compute these L2 Betty numbers. Uh, so we have a sort of combination theorem. Uh, so if you're, if you have a long way to free product or HRN extension uh, of groups, which have where the edge groups are, you know, satisfy some hypothesis, then you can ensure that the second L2 Betty number vanishes. Um, uh, in general, so if you have, if your group satisfies what's something called the stronger tier conjecture and you're torsion free, then the L2 Betty numbers are essentially dimensions of uh, homology groups over skew fields. And this is using this sort of interpretation, it's not too hard to compute L2 Betty numbers um, of groups. And so we have yeah, several computations in our, in our paper uh, done using this method. Okay, all right. Okay, let us thank Marco again. Thank you. So I'll stop recording.